It feels so good to be back again on this frequency where we give you the absolute best in the ever exciting world of sports. My name is Brownson Uwana, your host, and lots of things happening in the world of sports. Now, if you are following the Euros, you know that it is absolutely buzzing. And most people will say that some teams that we expect to dominate the championship right now are yet to pick up to the level we expect them to be. Now, the transfer window is also buzzing. Who is going where? It looks like the transfer saga that is involving a hurricane uh, may last for a very long time. Manchester United still going after Sancho. I have big question about that. And of course, the home base Super Eagles will be playing an all important friendly game against Mexico. We will give you updates on that and much more after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back. Olakule Philip joins me at this time. Kunle, good to have you on the program. Yeah, top of the day to you, Brownson Iwana. It's great to be here once again to talk sport. You know, 2020 is ongoing. We are seeing exciting games. And then, you know, some of the gay teams are not yet getting their redeem. But of course, um, you know, as the tournament progresses, and some of them will begin to uh, give it their hope. <laughs> of course, Kunle. We'll get to the heroes part later. But let's look at the international friendly game that would be coming up against Mexico. And um, it's good to know that uh, that game will be prosecuted by the home base Super Eagles. And um, let's just run through the invited players invited for this one. Ike Chikwe of course, of Heartland, has been invited as one of the goalkeepers. And, of course, John Noble of Aimba International would be in that game as well. On the defense line, we have Olisa Nda from Aqua United, Ade Kunle Adeleke from Abia Warriors, Tokbe Olusei, from Rangers International, Ifaim Anamena from Rivers United, Christopher Mweze from Quara United, Eimena Kazi from Rivers United, Mohamed Zekifu from Plati United. Um, of course, we also have Imo Obot from Eima International, Tebo Franklin, of course, from Nasara United, while Lawa Oriomi Mutala would be. Um, the last representative from Quora United. That's what the defense looks like. Quickly, let's run to the midfield row where we have Anthony Shimaga from Rangers International, Seth May from Aqua United, Uche uh, Wasonaya from Plateau United, Samuel Noshiri, Katsina United, Ekunda Yojo, AMA International. On the forward line where we need to have the firepower, we have, um, we have Anayo Iwala from AMA FC, Steven Jude from Quora United, Ibrahim. Olawoyi, Awalu Ali Malam from Kano Pillars, and Nairobi Emmanuel Plateau United, and of course, the last but not the least, Abdul Khalifi Sanusi from Katsina United makes up the list. Kule, I must tell you that this is a very good initiative for these players, not um, just to play friendly game, but to have um, international experience. This game will be played in the United States of America. Um, sometimes next month. Yeah, it's going to be played on July 4th, uh, precisely in the United States of America. And uh, we have a bunch of home base players uh, to prosecute the game. But we have my reservation is the fact that, uh, you know, the, the, we, we, the game uh, is an international friendly. And if Mexico gets to beat uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria, so affect it's going to affect their ranking. Remember that the game we lost against, uh, you know, Cameroon had a negative effect on the ranking. And right now we move from Third in Africa to 15, 15 Africa, which for me is very disappointing. There was no need uh, to lose the game, but then uh, you know, friendly games are meant to test uh, players. It will be a very massive one for the base players. It will be a good one. It will be a good chance for them to showcase, uh, you know, the talent and stuff they are made up of. Some of the players are already a part of the Super Eagles. The likes of John Noble and um, Iwala of Eimba Football Club of mm -hmm. Abba. So the rest of the base players, I feel that by virtue of the fact that the captain of the Super Eagles, talking about Ahmed Musa, mm. plies in straight in the yeah. domestic in the yeah. league, he should have been a part of the team. Uh, but one of the reasons why. The team and uh, the game will be prosecuted by the home base players because the day the game and the day does not fall into FIFA as uh, calendar. Free window. They were free window. So that's why the game and some of the players are already resting. They are already on uh, vacation. Already, yeah, on vacation. While some are already in their various clubs, of course, preparing ahead of the next season. That is the major reason 
why the games where well, the game will be prosecuted by the bunch of home based players. We wish them the best and we hope that they can't always the flag of the country very high. I will too be very disappointed. You know the Mexicans <laughs> I had not to crack any day any time. It's always a big battle between our top team, you know, the bunch of uh, you know professional player or uh, professional footballers from Nigeria talking about all our the, the Mexicans players. Uh, well, well for, for me I, I think the Mexicans are just uh, they're just an okay team. Um, I mean, last weekend they lost to Peru. Uh, Peru, that I think the Super Eagles of Nigeria with our full Arsenal can take out. Anytime. What gives you the impression that we can beat Peru, Browns in the <laughs> This present <laughs> well, crop of home based players can beat Peru. I, I, I don't think so. I think that it, when you talk about the North America, uh, they are one of the strong forces in North America alongside the United States of America. So, any day, any time, remember, even when the time passed, we played one of the, I think the last friendly game we played against them was a two all draw. It was a fierce battle. It's, a, it's, a, it's always an end to end game. That is what you get to see, you know, from the South Americans. I think Mexico, you know, even in the, in, when you talk about football history, the name Mexico comes to your mind any day, any time. Well, so, the home best players <laughs> must be at their best to, to get, get that a favorable result. All right, let's see how well these home base guys do. I mean, I, I think this friendly game really shot some critics up. Uh, I'll really stay late no matter when that time we play to see that game and to see if really the justification of home base players' inclusion in the main national team would be met on the day. Now, the Nigerian Professional Football League has been absolutely buzzing. We've seen a beautiful game of football played, and of course, the table for me. Um, no much changes. Some top team um, really rising and falling as far as um, the last weekend's concerned. Exciting games in the match day 28 of the MPFL, just like we said. Uh, one of the big games and uh, one of those exciting games I was looking forward to was Aqua United. You know they are on uh, the winning streak. They have not lost uh, you know, a game in, in, in almost about 16, 17 games uh, or thereabout. They took on Adama United and they were able uh, to get two goals past Adama United. Remember, Adama United at bottom of the table, uh, they've only turned out four wins and they've lost 17 uh, so far this season. When a team loses as many as 17 games in 28 games, uh, what do you expect? You wonder. They would play <laughs> the, the bottom of the table. Hey, but, uh, uh, by virtue of the fact that they defeated Rangers at uh, the previous week, one would have expected them uh, to beat National United and, of course, consent, I mean, consolidate. Yeah. Uh, some people have the opinion that they still have, since they have two games uh, to spare, they still have two games at hand. They have a very good chance of also moving and, of course, challenge uh, for the truck for the uh, title. But they slipped this time around uh, against uh, a team that I feel that they should have won. National United. They played out a goalless job with Nassau United. Rivers United defeated Casino United uh, by a goal to nothing. While the Gala Golden Stars defeated Cano Pillars uh, by one goal to nothing. I felt that Cano Pillars should have been able to get a favorable result against uh, the I mean against the Gala United the Golden Stars, but they showed that they needed the game the most. And of course, the Gala Golden Stars were able to turn out I mean get cut away with the three maximum points. I thank you by FC defeated Atlanta over by two goals to one. Uh, well. That line for me has been absolutely inconsistent, so I'm not surprised uh, that they actually lost that game. Liberty Stars defeated Cry United by two goals to nothing. Another disappointing result for Cry United. They keep dropping uh, down the ladder at but the point in time. They now let's let, let, let's go at the top of the table. Um, Cano Pillars also last weekend didn't do well. They dropped some points. Yeah. And uh, I mean the, the, the inconsistency is making uh, it, it very difficult to predict. Yeah. How it will, do you think Aqua United can run away with the title? Yes, I think they've got a very good chance for a team uh, to go on a winning streak as much as this. And the result they've been turning out, even away from home, has been absolutely commendable. They look like a champion team, a team if they they don't take their feet off the gas pedal. If they continue in this consistency, who says they can win? The next team that is close to them is Nassau United, and then they have uh, uh, Aqua United has 53 points. Nassau United has 49 points. That's four points defense. I know it is very massive in when Nigeria you are in, in Nigerian league. Cano Pillars are 49. They also have 49 points. Same mm. number of points is Nassau United, and then um, River uh, Rivers United have uh, they have 48 points, followed by. Quite United, who were at some point in time the leader of the, of the table. Yeah. You wonder why they say Nigerian Professional Football League is the strongest league in Africa? It's because of results like this. Yeah, we may not be the best, but of course, 
uh, with polls. I don't yeah. know why. Kule is planning about that. that. <laughs> <laughs> but we seem to have. We seem to have not been able to go past. We seem, the we seem to have the strongest the league. Cup Champions League. It doesn't uh, matter. It does. It doesn't matter. We seem to have the strongest league in Africa. And of course, uh, if that's what we can pride ourselves on, we hope that someday we'll take that strong nature uh, to the continent. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's uh, before we take this break, let's talk about Formula One. It's been absolutely buzzing. And uh, for all Lewis Hamilton fans, there are lots of questions being asked this season about his form. Now, he lost the first race of the season. Uh, of course, that was due to some, uh, you know, some stuff. But we've seen other riders or drivers take lead this season. Now, last weekend, we see Max Verstappen winning um, the, Span the French Grand Prix in a grand style. And it's, it's, I'm beginning to be worried for Hamilton. Uh, I'm not surprised because when you look at how the season has started, and even before the season started, Everybody has actually been giving it to Red Bulls uh, that they, they have what it takes to compete with the Mercedes at this season. And when you talk about the, the Red Bull, who comes to your mind other than Verstappen? And, you know, most of the time in recent uh, races they've actually been uh, involved in, he has been a very keenly contested, contested affair. So I think it's just, uh, it's been expected that, you know, at one particular point in time or the other, uh, Verstappen will be able uh, to get past uh, you know, it was Hamilton, which for me is it, it actually happened right now. So uh, it's just a dress rehearsal as to what we're going to see this season. It's going to be a big battle between Lewis Hamilton and, of course, uh, Verstappen all through because uh, the Mercedes, from what we heard, uh, they've been able to do some restructuring. They've been able to have uh, a change of uh, some of part of their cars, and their cars, uh, you know, are right now very, very good. And of course, they have. Uh, they, they, they can compete uh, with what Mercedes has in stock right now. So, for the rest of the season, it's going to be very, very massive. And I think that uh, Verstappen will really give uh, Lewis Hamilton a good run for his money this season. Kuli, I must tell you that um, if Formula 1 should come to Africa, and we have African drivers, Lagos drivers <laughs> would be Formula 1 time and no, time no, again. All those, all those, um, you Our Danfo drivers. <laughs> Best Formula One drivers. I'm telling you, they will beat Mercedes, uh, you know, beat New Zealand. Who is who is Vettel? You know, I, I mean, <laughs> just go to Ojolegba route to um, Maryland to Ojolegba. Echo to Mata. We take a very quick break. Kule, thank you so much for coming on the show. But don't go away. The show is still on after this break. Um, Abiodun will be joining me. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, the Euros has been absolutely buzzing. We've seen exciting games of football. Now, some teams have crashed out and, of course, some teams have booked their place in the round of 16. Very exciting game we've seen. And for some teams, yes, though they've qualified in the round of 16, but some analysts feel that they are yet to hit their peak as far as the championship is concerned. Now, join me to discuss this and much more is Steven Abiodu. Good to have you on the show today. Yeah, it's good to be here. You know, when we talk about um, Euros, it's one of the biggest thing happening in the world of sport uh, right now. A large array of stars playing their, you know, showing their stuff there in Europe, you know. We've seen match watching matches, goals being scored, some disappointment here and there, but altogether, I think it's still a good show. Definitely, I must agree with that, but let's look at some players. I mean, coming to this competition, the English national team had, and of course the English press, had lots of hype on Harry Kane. And the last, the, I think the second game, Harry Kane has, um, I think, nine touches on the ball for the duration of time he was on the pitch. And um, I, I think most people feel he has been very disappointing. Why do you think this is happening to him? Now, when we look at Harry Kane, yeah, Harry Kane is their hit man, is their target man when it comes to goal scoring. He's not been up and doing. We have to look at, at two facts there. Harry Kane playing for Tottenham. He has suppliers in the in, in the person of uh, Son, who is always giving him the passes. Lucas Mora sometimes. Lucas Mora, you have so, a lamb, you know, know? He, 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 he has a compact in there. And he's always up there waiting for the for the ball to come. But when, when it comes down to the England team, look at the two wing man, Phil Foden, um, Ryan Selling yeah. on the on the other hand. Ryan Selling is more of an individual player to me than a, a, a team man. Even in the Manchester City jersey, when you see him playing, you see he's more of dribble and shoot rather than dribble or create chances. One also look at Phil Foden. Phil Foden has been playing on the wing 
rather than the natural places being played in Man City, mm. which is behind the striker. Mm. So I think f uh, th uh, that's major reason why he's not getting um, the, supplies. the supply. And for me, if I were Harry Kane, something um, I think Mario did with him when he was back then, Tottenham, I would drop back, come join the midfield, get the ball, get the ball, and start the runs and again. Start the runs again. I can, I, I can start the run. Then I go back to my position and, and receive the pass. But if he's not doing it, if he's always uh, waiting for these guys to supply, he might not get the ball. Now, if you look at Gareth Southgate and the way he plays, uh, you see that it's totally different from the way Tottenham plays. Yeah. And I think if they continue like this, the team might get struggle. In my opinion, I think the English national team have got more quality on the bench that what they have put on the field of play mm -hmm. and if this doesn't change you never can tell maybe the round of 16 might be the last Probably. we've seen <laughs> of the english team now let's also look at some teams that have done well in the tournament now there have been some surprise elements like we see in most competition and of course there have also been some elements of disappointment but before we be able to talk about that let's look at the fact that the danish national team that's talking about denmark in their first game experienced a very tragic situation where, uh, of course, their, their top player, Ericsson, um, of course, had a cardiac arrest, but um, all thanks to God, he was uh, being resuscitated and, of course, brought back to life. Now, that game, last week on the show, we mentioned the fact that that, that game should have been postponed till the following day. But for some reason, um, you ever insist that the game, you know, go on that day. But of course, they went on to lose that game. So other than that incident that happened with Ericsson, I think... Denmark, for me, has been, uh, they lived below expectation because the, the other game they played and um, they lost at home to Belgium. They went ahead, they had stadium filled to capacity, so it means they had advantage of the 11th fan sure. on the night, but they failed to deliver. For, for me, I want to say for me, the Danish national team, yes, I sympathize with them with what happened in the first game, but I feel they've not lived up to their expectations. So in your opinion, which other team do you think? Um, I mean, I haven't lived to your own expectation. Well, for me, I think um, the English team hasn't lived up to the expectation. That's one part for me. Another thing that hasn't lived up to the expectation for me, I think, is the France team. You've started slowly. Though, another thing for them is, when we look at the last time out in the World Cup, they started slowly, but we also saw what came out of that. So probably you're still looking at them, picking up eventually. Talking about slow starts, um, the Kent, we hope they can be as lucky as they were in the World Cup. I mean, no two competition is the same. Of if you must be in the tournament, you have to start from the very first start. Definitely. Now, let's go away from the Euros and talk about some transfer stories. But this time around, Nigerians are also involved in the transfer market. Nigeria International, Brian Ido has joined Kimki on a permanent deal from fellow Russian Premier League club, Lokomotiv Moscow. I understand that that deal is a two-year deal for Ido. Congratulations to him on that one. Now, let's move to England, where Manchester City will make a final bid for Harry Kane. Now, they call this one, take it or leave it offer to Tottenham Hotspurs. 100 million um, pounds. And the other side of the story is saying that um, Daniel Levy is saying that Harry Kane would not leave the season. Now, we've seen this one, this happen, Stephen, um, year in, year out when um, Tottenham superstar. We understand the drama that happened between um, Luka Modric before he left. We saw that again repeat itself with oh, Gareth Bale. Bale. And um, I mean, it, it looks like a trend for Daniel Levy. I think Daniel Levy for me is a businessman who is always looking to, you know, get the most out of every business deal he's doing. That's what I think. Secondly, I think in this kind of scenario, I think it's even more difficult for him because he's, tell, he's selling to an arc driver. Not just an eye driver, you will be happy, you will be able to also strengthen Man City for the title challenge. But Stephen, do you think in the next five seasons Tottenham Sports can win at least a trophy? I honestly don't think so because for me, when you ask me, their best shot at getting a quick trophy was when Mario came. I thought, oh, Mario could do a quick magic maybe within two or three seasons, get a trophy, even if it's the Carling Cup for them. But it was given the boots. Uh, prematurely for me. At least, but so, Mario got to the final. They would have allowed him to uh, play the you finals. Understand. You never so, can tell. Yeah, I, I think that was their best bet right now for them to get a trophy. And since Mario is out of the way, any coach, I, if you even look at it, now their search for a coach has been very tough because they are not ready to give this. The top coaches, they are not ready to give them what they need to work to get them the trophies. Mm. And this coach wouldn't come. So I think for me, uh, Daniel Levy does, doesn't seem like a chairman that wants a trophy in, in the, as the engineer is possible. I, I, I think. Um, Tottenham is beginning to look like Arsenal, the group players <laughs> <laughs> on the low. <laughs> but I think they are, they are, they sell they are it on the high. like Arsenal from the onset. I, I, I think they are supermarkets. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> now let's look at some other stories. Manchester United have made a new bid 
for of more than 75 million euros for Jordan Sancho and Borussia Dortmund is saying it's 77 they want. I mean, two million pounds difference. When we look at the price play, uh, when we look at the price for players in recent times, it's not based on sometimes what the performance of the player. It's just based on the club's evaluation of their own assets. And if for you, you think this asset is worth it for me, splash the money, just get what you want. That's what I think. And for United, I don't know how much more they will keep buying. <laughs> uh, before they pay, <laughs> before they, 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 they grab a title. <laughs> so now, uh, it, will the inclusion of Jadon Sancho give United the Premier League title this season? Wow. <laughs> well, I can assure that because why you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tricky one. <laughs>Welcome back. With that is a wrap on the show today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Oh, I want to appreciate all of you. I've gone to our social media platforms um, to follow us. But of course, if you have not, what are you waiting for? So go to all our social media platforms currently displaying on your screen right now. And of course, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel right now. Thank you very much, Stephen Abiodo, for coming on the show. You're very much welcome, Brownson. All right. Until we meet again next week, my name remains Brownson. When I enjoy the rest of your day.